What about us, humans, and our minds longing for some places that once were and shall never be again? What about this feeling of life being like a brutal storm unleashed on our beings, feeling like these sailors condemned to drift away for eternity in a world they do not recognize anymore? What about these values? We're thinking attached to a universe that ceased to exist. These fights we've stopped believing in. The loves that will forever hurt. Or the others that we will never get. What happened to the kids we used to know? The ones transforming wood sticks into magical winds? trees into dance for talking alligators, or believing that jumping over a pool of mud could grant any wishes. What happened to the teenager we used to be? The first passions making our days brighter. The music we were listening to obsessively. The things we swear to never accept. What happened to the young adults we used to trust? The ones making the experience of adulthood with the guts instead of the head. The ones learning the rules but not bending with these expectations, these hopes this craving of seeing what's there for them, above and beyond. What happened? There is this word in Japanese that cannot be translated into English, a word that embodies the beauty of the storms we once faced and the shore we managed to reach alive, with our eyes still able to get amazed by the discovery of the new landscape of our minds. A word where our dreams, aspirations, past hopes, fails and fights are truly mirrored as they should be. Contemplated with the gratitude of each experience it granted us with. A word made of places in time, so bright, so full, so intense, that nothing on earth could tarnish it. A word where each part of us, the kid and the magic, the teenager and the intensity, the young adults, and the daring spirits are just finding the place where they belong. A word where nostalgia is not like the feeling of these heavy stones in the pit of our stomachs, but like these fresh, thundering and foaming rivers we based in on a hot summer day. It might be that adults are starting to get old when they do not believe in the magical powers of words and in significant things anymore. When a puddle of mud is just a puddle of mud. When their minds refuses to perceive the simple beauty of an infinite blue sky or the appreciation of a moment for what it is, something that will disappear like we'd all do one day, but something real, a privilege, something to be appreciated to the very core. It might be that adults are starting to get old when they do not believe in the magical powers of connections anymore when they refuse to dig beyond the pretenses 
building their own defenses, turning into someone so unrecognizable to themselves, creating layers and fortresses of skins, bones, and scales that should forever prevent the other from any hopes of seeing the truth behind it. It might be that adults are starting to get old when they do not believe in the magical powers of the unknown anymore. When they do think that the discovery is not worth the pain of disappointment. When the fears of what is coming next are too strong, the future too blurry, and the past too far. When jumping over the fences, the walls, the other side of the streets, is a feeling that faded away a long time ago and shall not be resurrected anymore. It is worth the pain. It is worth the disappointment. It is worth the fears. It is worth the many learning. It is worth believing in loss and magic. It is worth believing in connections and chaos. It is worth jumping over the fences and tasting the limits of it. Because there are these lands so bright, so full, so intense, that nothing on earth could tarnish it. Magical lands where we once stood, felt strong and complete. Beautiful lands that we can contemplate without any regret or sadness. The ones that, because they existed once, made us believe in the many more to explore. It is worth the pain. It is worth the disappointment. It is worth the fears. It is worth the many learning. It is worth believing in loss and magic. It is worth believing in connections and chaos. It is worth jumping over the fences and tasting the limits of it. Because there are these lands so bright, so full, so intense, that nothing on earth could tarnish it. Welcome on board. You are one of the passengers of Transmission, Episode 6, a podcast about the everyday anti-heroes. Enjoy the journey. Notebook number 11, from the year 2005. Archives of mine. Bordeaux, 14th of September 2005. Dear Emily, by the time you read this notebook, you'll be 30. I'll be curious to see if you'll manage to build an army of Kenya pigs by then. If it's the case... Make sure that you do not forget about the fact that they do not synthesize vitamin C. And please, protect the cables of your laptop, you moron. I hope that you'll still have the habit of having a notebook with you. Maybe not 10 or 12 like you have right now, because you love trees. But at least one. I hope that you won't feel old. Please don't feel old. Except if something terrible happened to you that would have compromised the rest of your days. Please, live, breathe, be. And let me know how many new flavors of Ben and Jerry's have been created by them. If you're feeling old, 
it will certainly mean that your pockets are full of regrets accumulated, loves you've never experienced, important places still unexplored. And I don't want that for you. Life is an ocean of sweat. Oh my god, the cookie dough, please. I hope that you're not nostalgic of who I am right now. It could be that my hair is darker, my belly super flat. Even though it has never been the case, praise be the cookies ingested. And that I seem to be at the crossroad of all the options possible. It's true that my life seems to begin like right now. But I hope that you're still able to be open to the many options that life can offer. That you won't become all grave and resigned and depressed. Please, don't. I have a list of things I want for me right now. And I have one for you as well. Something is telling me that your 30 years old you will still be found of lists. You already were as a kid, as a teenager, and I don't see that changing. I have made one for you. And if you haven't lost this notebook, I want you to have a look at it when the time comes. Don't feel pressured. I won't be disappointed if you're not sticking to all the points. And try not to be harsh regarding the decisions that I have made. I'm 20 years old after all. I will fuck it up a thousand times for sure. Fall in love with the ones I should not fall in love with. Break rules. Cut my fringe too short again by myself. Disappoint myself, my family fail, be hurt, and hurt maybe some persons in the process. But I will learn. I really hope that I will learn from it. And that you will certainly be wiser thanks to all these storms I would have paved your way with. Including weird homemade haircuts you'll never think a human mind could create. So, here it is. Number one, don't be afraid to explore the infinite abyss. You've watched a thousand times this Garden State movie for a reason. Okay, mainly for the soundtrack and Zach Braff. But this quote is sticking to your mind for a reason. Don't run away from your fears. Even if it's scary and not that nice. Even the darkest sides of your person can teach you something. I guess. Number two, take care of your inner weirdo. Admit it, right now, you're not the most normal and classic person on earth. Don't cultivate it for vanity neither. But don't be a perfectly normative and boring person. You're weird, my dear. There is no need in trying to fit perfectly to places where you do not belong. Number three. If you do not have a guinea pig, I hope that you will have a dog. Or even better, a guinea pig, a chinchilla, and a dog. Number four. Make time for creation. This is your second breath. Something that you should never remove from your life. The only point I would be seriously disappointed about if you're not doing anything anymore about it. I don't want you to be a famous writer, a rock star, or the best guinea pig artistic director of the year. Just create. Please. It's important. Number five. Whatever is happening, be proud of being someone nice. Don't let bitterness or the ages of the world turn you into a stone man. Never believe that being kind is a proof of weakness or uncool. Never be afraid to believe that there might be still something to trust in the humankind, no matter what. Number six. Keep having friends, real ones. The one that will kick you out of your comfort zone. 
The ones that will make you forget about gravity. The one that will still die by ingesting too much ice cream with you. The ones that will share a session of dance in pyjama until the early morning. The ones you'll never be afraid to get old with because they will tell you when you're ruining everything but will let you make your own mistakes if you need to. Consider yourself as a lucky person if you still have some of the ones that you have right now and that you can witness each other's growing up, evolving, and shaping the life that you're starting to build for yourselves. Number seven. There is no number seven. Just be your own fucking superhero. With the help of all the unusual ones you would have by your side, you will need it. Because there is no point in reminding you that life can be harsh and scary. But this can be a topic for another list. It's time to stop writing, because the guinea pig is craving for a carrot. With love, Emily. Not from the author? I can say that years later, I've been lucky in that. Um, this full years of my early 20s and especially living um, with you, it was really part of this whole transition of going from a teenager living in the countryside to really becoming an adult and discovering more and more about adult life, but in a really always fun way. I don't remember ever being sad or depressed during those years it was really um just a really fun time and um also very creatively opening um eye-opening because we were um i feel making music and decorating the house and um i think i even dyed my hair that year um Lots of mistakes were made, but uh, <laughs> it was all in uh, all in good fun, and um, it was a very joyful time. To my companion, through the happy storms of my twenties, my first flatmate, and dancer in pajamas, this anti-hero. Running in the streets of Bordeaux at night, singing and dipsy, stealing the beans of a printing shop, changing the streets in a scenery of a post-apocalyptic carnival, being arrested and forced to bring back the beans where we took it and to clean up the mess, falling madly in love, having our hearts shattered for ever, and getting over it in one night with a bottle of cheap white wine that was burning our tongues, dancing like crazies on electro-rock bands. The exams we were stressing about, the first internships we were doing, even with our free hours of sleep, and then the first jobs, the real ones. The life that was starting to take a different shape and that we were exploring with our anti-gravity boots firmly attached to our feet. That is what we were. The first draft of the adult version of us, half conscious that they were heading now to a place where gravity will have to be defied at any moment. Where is Mathieu? I have experienced this stage of my life where the world started to look like those windows wide opened on a wild and exciting new territory. A new territory 
where the magic could still be trusted and has this inimitable taste of freedom. The continuous flow of the crowd in the Rue Sainte Catherine on a Saturday afternoon, the smell of dust, mold and cigarettes, so peculiar of the old rock venues. The moments at the park with this summer feeling on the skin, with these gigantic sunglasses on, making us look like gigant flies. The millions of extremely skinny jeans he used to wear and could not remove on his own. The million times I cut my hair and ended up looking like a living bowl. The beauty of the early morning or late night out, admiring the sunrise from the miroir d'eau. The beauty of the last lights of our student years. Well, Bordeaux is a city where I was born. Um, it was quite of like the kind of like the big city um, for me when I grew up because I was living in the countryside in a very little village. So Bordeaux was a big city, right? Um, but for me, it really is the city where I discovered myself and where I met some of the best friends um, that I have to still today, including you. And um, it was really like um, a moment and a city for me to make a lot of discoveries and really grew into the person that I am today. If I'm thinking about Bordeaux, I have to think about Mathieu. Like this new city, to me, he had this unusual touch. This British accent, mixed with a perfect knowledge of the Beatles, combined with the Spice Girls, from all the Britpop classics to the TV shows. Yeah, I would say I'm not a very usual French person, even though I'm still very French. But I guess um, I grew up in front of the TV watching a lot of American TV, a lot of um, British TV. So I always grew up with that. Also uh, listening a lot of English music and try to really be open to the world. And um, so I spoke English from a quite a young age. And um, I guess, yes, um, TV and culture and um, always made me quite aware of the rest of the world and obviously now living abroad in an Asian country um, really changed my visions of things even more. Um, so I would say that's maybe how unusual I am as a Frenchie but I'm still very French at heart sometimes. Like this city, he was fully open to connections. Connecting was an art he was naturally owning Curious as a kid willing to discover if a stone was indeed a gem. I don't really know how people see me, but hopefully they think that I'm um, a nice person and funny person, I would say. I, I'm, I'm, I've always been quite social and I've always loved to um, meet new people and discover more about them and try to engage the most with them. So I hope that's how people see me as a social, um, easy to interact with and nice person. I hope. <laughs> with Mathieu, sadness wasn't meant to last. Why being sad? when we could improvise a musical about being out of butter? Why wasting time on negative thoughts when there was a joke to make about life itself or tap dancing to do? Why torturing ourselves about the difficulty of being yourself when you could just try to be? His natural joy and trust in what life has to offer was something he gifted me with when gravity was catching up with me. Why do I think my friends love me? Um, I think my friends love me, <laughs> like me at least, because I I feel that I'm quite 
reliable um that i'm there for them when they need me even though i'm very far away right now um but also i think they find me entertaining i hope um as i was saying um i i try to be um or at least i think i am quite a funny and social person and i feel like I hope that my friends feel comfortable that they can talk to me about everything and anything and that I will always be a good uh, ear um, to listen to, to them. And um, yeah, I, I think they see myself, they see me as a, a funny person and that will be always uh, here to um helps them one thing he never managed to share with me though was his sense of fashion i have been an anarchist of the style for years and at this stage of my life lots of experiments were happening i still remember his face each time one of these festivals of strange clothes association was happening I knew exactly what was happening in his head and learned to decipher what a raised eyebrow meant, the one I called the eyebrow of disapproval. I won't say anything, but you know exactly what I'm thinking. When this eyebrow was raised in front of other people, I knew as well that some spicy times were coming ahead. I think some of my friends also really like me because they think I'm a gossip and <laughs> I always um, gossip with them. So maybe that's not a really good reason for them to like me, but that might be one of the reasons why they like me. I also know a lot of pop culture, so maybe I get some of them like me to like to come to me for for updates on pop culture. I don't know. I have in my mind... This space is dedicated to all the happy places of my life. Once, I can recall without even closing my eyes. These spots of vivid colors and memories I could never feel sad or nostalgic about. There is one forever linked to this flat we shared together. So if we go a little bit back in time to... Um the time where we shared a flat uh, and thinking about the best memories that I have there. It's actually a collection of good memories. I think we lived really together only for a year, even though um, the two previous years we lived very close by and the year after too. So it's almost like we've, we've lived together for four years. But really that year where we shared a flat, it was very special Um and it was the first time that I shared a flat with someone and you were the best roommate. And <laughs> um, it was actually very funny and a lot of collections of good memories. I would say if I had to pick my best memories, it would be being hungover on a Sunday afternoon on the couch watching Titanic uh, for the hundreds times and almost like um, quoting the movie that it goes. Um, another great memory would just be um, cleaning the apartment in our pajamas, dancing around and jumping around to Le Tigre. Um, uh, and finally, maybe just um again i guess were, were we living in our pajamas all my best memories are when we were in our pajamas doing nothing but um just staying up very late sitting on the floor in our living room and making some music with you and you know playing the guitar singing and these were very very happy times it was our coming of age space a space of creation life and experiences where we created this really confidential band called the Dandy's Lipstick, composing naive folk pop songs on a small keyboard and a guitar, where we shared our common love for pocket fries, our surprise in front of the many colors and shades 
an old forgotten plate of rice could have. We shared space with a guinea pig and had our first common loss. If I had to pick one of the most what the F moments um, about that time that we shared a flight, I would definitely say all these times that we cleaned the house and we were in our PJs jumping around to Le Tigre um, and just like screaming and dancing. And it was really fun. I guess also um, drinking martini for some reason at the same time. Um, another really what the hell moment was when we had to bury um, our, uh, or, or at least do the funeral for your guinea pig um, that we called Doherty. And um, it ended up being in a shoebox that we threw in the trash, poor him. Um, that was really a WTF moment of our um, sharing an apartment. That links to one of the WTF moments that I was talking about, about um, the funeral of your lovely guinea pig Doherty. Um, so that guinea pig was living with us for a few months, I guess. I don't really remember. Um, it was uh, lovely. I just didn't really connect with the animal. Uh, I remember that his cage was in the kitchen and it was quite smelly. Um, but I was also very sad when he passed away. Also, I remember that he passed away a weekend that you were uh, not in the apartment. You were away for the weekend. So I had to take care of his um, last moments. And that was a pretty sad time. Um, yes. Um, R.I.P. Doherty, the guinea pig. In our flat, I had the very first taste of what it's like to live according to the rules we're creating for ourselves and the harmony we can find in it. Whereas this specific episode of our life, with this ego way we had to explore the many possibilities of life and beyond, it was a cure against one of the most lethal danger for the humankind we were offering to our future selves. A cure against the regrets of the unexplored, the bitter taste of an achievement. Am I afraid to get old? Um, I'm not really afraid to get old anymore. I guess I never really thought about it. Um, and I really lived my life and my teen years and my 20s especially um, <laughs> like no tomorrow. And now that I'm in my 30s, um, I can see that obviously I am getting old and I'm aging. Um, but that's not really something that I'm afraid of. And I guess it's also because I'm at a great point in my life um, for my age. Uh, I'm very happy with my um, work um, life balance. And I guess I see the years that I've passed more like experience um, and excited to see what's to come. It happens to young adults, what happens to every kid, to every teenager that we once were. A craving for new experiences, new exploration of how we're fitting in our skins, the will to add new memories with vivid and powerful colors. For Mathieu and myself, we were like these two kids embarking on the pirate boats of adulthood. We helped each other to reinforce and build, sailing towards this infinity and beyond we had now to explore on our own. He left for Paris. It's also um, a city that is that had a... a big impact on my life because that's where I lived from the age of 22 to 30 right so um, all my most of my 20s I lived in Paris and I also met a lot of my very dear friends there and I had so much fun um, I guess it was a bit harder because um, 
in Bordeaux, I was a student and I was supported by my family. In Paris, I was really supporting myself financially and I really um, was on my own, basically. So it was um, full of struggles, but also full of adventure and exciting times. I headed to Ireland. Years later, the shore of our 30s had been reached. These good old ships were still solid, and their wood was made of all the connections, the experiences, the sadness, joy, and precious instants that we could have collected on the way. For him, the flag he adopted was the one of Hong Kong. Well, Hong Kong is a very special place because obviously that's the city where I lived right now. Um, and I arrived here to follow my partner and I, the, the thing is I arrived to live in Hong Kong without ever visiting Hong Kong before. Um, the only other place that I had been in Asia before was Tokyo for a few days. So it was really a jump into the unknown. Um, but the thing is, uh, I felt immediately welcome and comfortable and safe in Hong Kong and, and free here. Um, so I really love, love the place, love the people. And um, I think it's a, it's a great city that, that is absolutely beautiful in terms of um, architecture, in terms of um, sightseeing, um, And in terms of energy, the energy here is very special. Um, yes. Mine got planted in Barcelona. Who knows what our stories will be made of? What heavy clouds, storms and defeats these oceans can hold for us? Who knows what kind of lands we will conquer? Or... What face will adopt our ship's figurehead? It might be that adults are never getting old when they finally understand the non-importance of the journey. But the one given to each defining moment of it and the infinity it has to bring. It might be that adults are never getting old when they are never stopping to find the source of magic and curiosity, even in what could seem old places. Um, well, I also think that K-pop is very um, light and positive. And I think in this time that is quite depressing and, and grey, it's nice to have some fun, uplifting messages and music and content to turn yourself to. So that's why I really like it right now. It also opens me to a new culture, which is the Korean culture, um, for which I've watched a lot of K-dramas <laughs> that goes along and <laughs> parallel to the K-pop. And also um, made me start learning Korean. So, hey, new new um, horizons. <laughs> It might be that adults are never getting old when they have in their mind this collection of places so bright, so full, that nothing can tarnish it. These places that can bring them back into a flat in Bordeaux, in their twenties, when they were almost kids creating silly and naive songs, not very aware yet about how important this moment is, how it will help them to navigate safely and forever through the unknown rivers of adulthood. So, this is a song that reminds me of our time together because that's a song that we wrote together actually called I Like You. It's quite an innocent and, and funny 
song um, and I remember exactly of how we wrote it. We were listening to Sean Lennon's album and you were playing the guitar and we were trying to make a silly, funny, easy song and I still, I still have it in my head sometimes. You would just listen to Transmission, Episode 6, a self-produced podcast available on all your favorite podcast platforms and on the website lanedupangolin.com. I'll see you on the 2nd of April for a new story for the French version of this podcast with subtitles. Transmission will come back in English on the 16th of April. Take care of yourself.